Last week, I did a quick video on how to create the box for the modular bed system. This week, I'm going to show you the finished product and I'm going to show you all the different configurations you can do with your brand new modular bed system with storage underneath. So let's get going. Welcome to the inside of the van. First, let's talk about the box. The box is 30 inches by 24 inches by 6 inches deep. It has hinges on it to open and close the top. The cushion sits on top and is, of course, the exact same measurement as the box. So I'm going to take off my cushion. For ventilation purposes, I have drilled five holes in the top. And of course, you can see that the, it has been stained. You can see that it slides. On the bottom of each box, I have applied these sliders. They just take the little sticky pad thing off the protector and just stick it to the underside of your box. The opening right here for lifting your lid. So inside the box, you can see you have a ton, 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 ton of room to put whatever you might need to put in here. If you want to hold the box lid up with something, just get a stick and put it in there. That's an easy solution. I'm all about easy solutions. You can have two different living room modes if you would like. This is one of them. So you'll have your love seat here with the backboard behind it. And then your other cushion, of course, is in the L shape. And what this is great for is if you have company and you want to eat. You can have somebody sit on that cushion and somebody sit over here and you put your low table right there for your meal. You also have a ton of floor space with it in this configuration. I mean, it is huge. And then look at all the floor space you have in front. So that is one idea for you. The next idea is to have your love seat and then just use this as a footstool out in front. You still have plenty of room around the whole footstool over there and over here this would be great for movie night you want to kick your you got a neighbor over you're going to be staring at a screen a couple of people feet up on the footstool popcorn in the bowl ready to go we're going to move this into bed mode I'm turning this one so that it is the 30 inches is this way, the 24 inches is this way, and I'm going to put it right up against the passenger seat. So I know I have to move this one outside of the car just a bit in order to make my puzzle pieces fit. If you didn't have the two feet back here, you wouldn't have to do that maneuver because you would have all the room to move this around. But since I've taken two feet away from my length, this is how I have to do it. And then I'm going to bring this over. So here's where the secret is about turning this into bed mode. This box has to get turned. You can move these when they have things inside of them. And that goes right up against the wall right there. You're probably saying to yourself, this is all kinds of work. <laughs> and yeah, it is a little bit of work, but what else have I got to do when I'm at, when I'm at my campsite, right? And it helps keep you in shape <laughs> because you're doing stuff. Or you can leave it in one configuration and just not move it at all. Whatever your choice is on, on this. I happen to be one of those crazy, wacky, weird people that love to move furniture. <laughs> I really do. All right, so now I've got my two cushions there. Snug that up against the other one. And I'm not even short of breath. <laughs> so you now have your bed mode. You have lots of room on the side of your bed. If you wanted more storage, you could put drawers right over there. It'd be temporary if you wanted to move it back into couch mode. But if you kept it in bed mode all the time, you still have a ton of floor space. Look at all of this. 
There's still enough room there to take a shower. There's still enough room there to pull your kitchen in and cook inside. There's still enough room there for whatever you might want to put there, your dog's bed. There's a lot of room, even if you leave this in bed mode all the time. And you're also getting a very large bed. This bed is 30 inches wide and it's 72 inches long when it's like this. Plenty big enough for me. And these mattresses are extraordinarily comfortable. I'm going to be doing a DIY. I used to make waterbed sheets way back in the day. <laughs> yeah, I used to make waterbed sheets way back in the day, like I said. So I'm going to take that same concept and I'm going to make a set of sheets for this configuration. Since these are not connected to each other, which I've been on this bed, they don't need to be. They stay right where they are. They're not sliding around. These cushions have a stickiness to them already, probably because of the fabric I used on the cushion tops. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a sheet. I'm going to cut it to where it will fit the width of this bed. And then I'm going to sew the contour pockets on there so you can use it like a contour sheet. Remember the old sheets that didn't have the elastic? You had an actual corner on your bed that you tucked in underneath. That's how this sheet will be. And then I will attach the top sheet to the bottom sheet so that it doesn't come off. They stay together. So now I want to just kind of give you a tour of my van because I'm sure there are people that are watching this that have never seen my van tours and show you what I've done in the back and we'll take it from there. So here we go. I like my little pillow right there in case I wanted to, for some crazy reason, sit on the floor. I love the color of this stain on this wood too. So that is not quite lined up. So I'm going to pull that box forward so it is and pull this one forward. I like those right in a row. So remember, you've got storage, storage, storage. All of this is storage under here. Secured my backboard here just with L brackets at the bottom. I started out with these little ones and then I found these in my stash and I bought huge ones, but I don't have the screws that would work. So I have all kinds of L brackets and I also have them in the front for support, but there is no support here. So it is a little bit flexible. That's why you don't want to really lean on this hard unless you can come up with a solution to attach this somehow without hurting your van to make it a little stronger up here. Let's go into the trap doors. I know when you saw this being made, if you watched my floor video, you only saw three. I did four. Inside here, this is my portable toilet. This would come out when I'm camping. And in there is the ever flammable propane. And if you rear end me, you're out of here. <laughs> These are extra bamboo for air filters. Down here is my collapsible shovel. This is my cocoa core for, you know what that's for, the composting. And then back here, I have my chair and my table, which would come out when I got to my campsite. And that little object that's black and white here, that is a 12 volt vacuum cleaner. See, I'm all about the simplistic. This thing looks horrible, but I don't care. Who am I trying to impress? <laughs> really. <laughs> In here, I have a whole bunch of rags for all kinds of applications. My mosquito net that I put over my trunk space with magnets. In this bag right here, that's exactly what's in there. Magnets, bungees, electric blankets, you name it for fastening, Velcro, it's all in that bag. I have a big mosquito net that I can either put over my car or configure it on PVC pipe. This is a fold-up huge picnic blanket. And then there's my mat that opens up when I'm at campsite. That's very large as well. Over here, I have my tent stakes my gloves, some parachute cord, and this is a safety kit with binoculars and things like that in it. Let's 
So I have now got my rear part of my car in kitchen mode. Or has everything in here that when I'm camping, I don't take anything that needs to be refrigerated. I try to find meals that are do not require that. So I've got some survival food in here. I have a whole bunch of these different kinds of rice and quinoa. All you do is heat them up basically. And boy, that feeds me for a couple of days. I have these dehydrated things from Harmony House. I have a whole bunch of this that I take with me. This kept me going and oatmeal when I was out for my trip to California. And then this is just sugar yumminess in there that I kept out here because I don't want to eat it in there. <laughs> this is my kitchen drawer. So I have my cutting boards in here pot holder, my silverware, my tea kettle, measuring cups, pots and pans, and that has a bunch of little items in it as well, and then my dishes and some plastic silverware back here. This is a catch-all kitchen area. I have a tablecloth, I have Brillo handy wipes, towel, uh, scrubby towels, this is Reflectix that I put around my stove when I'm cooking and the wind is blowing. Underneath that, shopping bags, and I have a collapsible bucket. Over here, some garbage bags. This is all for my faucet. No, it's not. There's rope in that. That's right. Clothespins are right there, and then more clamps. Right here is a solar shower and a collapsible sink. Once again, I show you how I've got this configured so I can cook right here. And then this is my faucet with running water. And I can use it from inside the van or outside the van. I can cook inside the van or outside the van without having to move any of this. I can brush my teeth, all of that. This is now where I'm keeping my water sources, and of course I can add more bottles of water around the kitchen. I'm going to have six gallons in this configuration with me, and I might bring one of the big blue bottles that has six gallons in it as well, so I'll have 12 gallons on board. Right now you're looking at the back side of the bed and the modular system, and as you recall, I when I built the floor, I added storage underneath the floor. Don't look at the mess because I need to vacuum. But under here, you can put more than I have even. I've got tarps and I've got Reflectix right there. And you can see there's still room to add more small items. This is my outdoor rug and I keep it in here when I'm in travel mode. And then when I get to my campsite, I put my mat out and then I put this rug on top of it and my little bin I'll show you in a minute goes there for my, my shoes. So on this side of the bed I have storage as well. That's my solar panel and that is Peanut's playpen for when we're at the campsite. Over here that's just my window shade. I need to get new Reflectix for my windows. They crinkled up and we had a hot mess. And one of Peanut's little dishes for water. This is my cabin. I think that's what you call it, right? The cabin? Oh, by the way, my car has a new name. Her name is Mariah, because we're going to go where the wind blows us. Peanut's new seat, and he absolutely loves it. However, he promptly ripped the little thing off that tethers him to the seat. <laughs> so I need to sew it back on. But in the meantime, I'm just using his leash for that. And then I still have my console in place. Typical Dodge. It's a 2014. Dodge Caravan. I think I'm up too close. All right, let's go look over what we have on Peanut's side of the car. Over here, I've got the other window shade, and I've got a bottle slapped in there for now, but it usually sits in the cup holder. And then up here, I have a couple of coolers, so I can utilize those when I'm on the road. There's my little bin that I put down for my shoes, and this is Peanut's bed. 
that is collapsible. Underneath the seat is a battery charger, a compressor, and I believe my quilted window covering is under there as well. Before I go, I wanna go over the flooring. So underneath my rug, I have those exercise pads that are half inch thick that are puzzle pieces together it makes this floor really really cushy and i'm not crawling around on my hands and knees on an uncushy floor this is underneath one of the bins I, underneath the bed i wanted to show you this earlier and forgot to film it so those are towels and sheets and this is a big huge blanket this thing is gigantic and there's still room in here to put more towels and sheets and things like that. I hope you have really enjoyed being on this van build journey with me. This has been going on now for over a year. Not this build, but all of the builds that I've done over time. And I'm telling you what, I'm so glad it's over. <laughs> and you know, it's Easter Sunday and I was asking the Lord, the other day I did a video on my other channel Winter's Place explaining my water situation and other things like that from a different point of view than what you guys saw on this channel and I was talking to God about the van build and when I did my water thing and I did the vlog and I said I've got shocking news because I don't want to live in a van <laughs> I don't you know I said I didn't know the answer well, I think he gave me the answer. It's for you. It's for you, the passionate, wonderful human being that needs a place to stay. And you're trying to figure out the best way to do it. I am beyond amazed at every single van build I watch on YouTube. The genius behind what these people do, it, it just blows my mind. There is not one van build that is like another. Well, there are some that they go with the kit and they all look the same. They've got the built-in cabinetry and then you've got that bed that kind of slides out like this and slides back up into a seat, which is a really cool bed. It gives you a couch and then it gives you the bed and all of that. But for the most part, the ingenuity behind what people do in their vans, it just, I'm in awe. It blows me away. And all of that being said, I think God gave me an amazing last van build for you. This isn't for me. This isn't for me. This is for you. And that is why he has had me doing this. And I'm so thankful that I have been able to share all of this with you guys. I appreciate every single person that has watched a video, that has hit the thumbs up, that has subscribed. I never dreamed that my channel would have this many people on it, and I'm humbled by it. What I'm trying to say is, this is my last van video. Yay! <laughs> I am so happy. I don't have to spend any more money. <laughs> I've spent a lot of money on this. A lot of money. We're talking close to three grand now over the past year. Especially with how expensive the wood was for this one. This right here was $300 to build this floor and the boxes, $300. And it was, praise God, that I had an extra piece of plywood to work with, which was the other bed that I had built, because otherwise I would have had to gone back to the store to get another piece because I did this board back here. This was not in the original plan in my head to have this backboard here. I am so glad it's here. That's why when I'm moving my configuration around, it's a little more difficult because I've lost two feet back here. So if you don't have this as your garage area, if you have all of this floor space back here, that will make you moving your bed around in your van a lot easier than it is for me. I have to have the passenger seat all the way to the forward position for my 72 inches. It fits perf perfectly <laughs> from headboard to the seat console area. The driver's seat, in order to move 
the configuration around. I do have to push the driver's seat forward so I can maneuver the boxes. But I love this whole concept of all the storage underneath my rear end. And I know people store things underneath their beds. They do. They do, they do, they do. This is nothing new. But I just like the fact that it's compact and it's movable. And I'm, I have moved the furniture in my house my whole entire life. My mom used to move the furniture in her mom's house because grandma never did. And it drove my mom nuts. And so she moved furniture. Well, I inherited that gene from her. And if this is a space that maybe someday I'll be living in, I don't know. I pray God not that that won't happen. To go out and have fun in it, yeah, definitely. The space that having the ability to move my furniture in a space and change it up. There's so much I can do with this stuff. I can take these two cushions and move them up there where the seats are, and then I can put my L cushion back here. What does that give me? That gives me the room back here to cook. So I don't have the seats right in front of the, uh, right in front of my cooking station. So I can literally change it in so many different ways. I love this. I love this van build. I hope that you do too. I really do, because this is for you. If you implement it, oh my gosh, email me please and send me pictures that of what you did. I would love to see pictures. In fact, if you have a van and you want to share your van build with me, would you please email me your pictures and then maybe I can share them on my channel? and get to know you all a little bit better. I feel really sad that I had to leave my group, Senior Women Van Lovers, but I had to take the stand that I did. And so I really want to, you know, still do a meetup and, and it doesn't have to be through that group. There, There's this medium right here. <laughs> so if I have women that want to come to Colorado and do a meetup, you can email me and I will get it set up. I already know exactly where I want to go for it. And it's not that high. I have really enjoyed this and I've gotten long-winded and I apologize for that. But this has just been so much of a journey of not knowing why I was doing this. But then he gave me the answer today. You're doing this for them. You're doing this for your audience. Thank you. I love all of you. I hope you all had a glorious Easter. I hope you all looked up and praised the Lord for what he did for us today. Thank you. Watch out what comes next. I don't know.